from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. Glad you're with us tonight. We're talking about a new bill that was passed just last week that is designed to keep black history in our schools. We've heard all kinds of bills talking about eliminating uh, critical race theory, banning books. This is a bill that will require the teaching of black history in our schools. We're going to talk with a sponsor, want to learn more about it, how this passed in this current environment. Happy to have with us mm -hmm. Representative Yusuf Hakeem, mm -hmm. Democrat, Chattanooga. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. Very pleased to be with you. Glad you're here in person, not by Zoom. <laughs> okay. All right. So first of all, this is called mm -hmm. the Black History Act, mm -hmm. right? Tell me, I, I want to know how you got it passed, but tell mm -hmm. me what it does, first of mm -hmm. all. What, what it does is afford an opportunity for children to have a broader perspective on American history and see the positive impact and uh, value and worth that has uh, been put forward by people of color, African Americans. And so positive role models is what it's all about. And it's in grades five through eight? That is correct, sir. Yeah. And so how, how, how does that work? It, it requires that they learn about positive mm -hmm. role models in those mm -hmm. grades or, or mm -hmm. what what exactly happens there we have our normal social studies books and these will be chapters within that social studies book and of course it'll be taught by the teacher and where it used to be that uh, the teacher would have the option of doing it or not doing it. This is a requirement now. And so as a result of that, that children have an opportunity to talk and inter have interaction in regards to those role models that are being put forward. So how, so it was an option before. Mm -hmm. How do you think this will change how, what kids are learning mm -hmm. in, in the sixth grade? When this goes into effect, mm -hmm. And, and when exactly does it go into effect? Okay, it's scheduled to go into effect school year 25-26. And, and you'll tell more about that, but yes, that has sir. something to do with, with keeping the cost down. That is Because correct. that's when there were going to be new books ordered and that yes. kind of thing. Uh -huh. So let's say a sixth grader in 2026, how will this change what a sixth grader might have learned this year? Mm. Well, again, uh, it was an option. But now they'll have the opportunity to explore this part of American history that maybe they had not before. For. Now, what it does is afford children an opportunity to see people doing positive things. We're talking about people who have a history and a track record of doing things that are positive. Like the Tuskegee Airmen. Not only our children, but probably adults are not aware that we had one Tuskegee Airman, Luke Weathers, who went to high school and college in the state of Tennessee. And uh, we have uh, Samson, Samson Keeble, uh, the first African-American legislator in the state of Tennessee. Those are the kinds of persons that we're talking about. We have some in the past and we have some present that people can look at and say, uh, we, this is a positive role models. This is not a threat to who I am or what I'm about, but it, it inspires people, all people, to reach for more than what maybe you come from and be the best that you can be. So they'll learn about some role models. Yes, sir. They'll learn about some role models in, in history, yes, in sir. grades five through eight. Mm -hmm. Why did you think this was needed right now? Mm -hmm. Well, if we look at uh, our, uh, the demeanor of most, a lot of people in our state and in our nation, we're very divided. And we didn't want, well, we attempted to put a broader bill in place, but it created a lot of friction. But I believe my colleagues saw the opportunity to do something that benefits the children without being abrasive. And I think as a result of that, and that we were able to move this bill forward. And it, it's all about the children. And if they can see each other uh, with a history and a track record of doing something positive, I think that bodes well for our nation moving forward. There have been some tough bills passed yes, up there. Mm -hmm. You're talking about, I mentioned, critical race theory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and concern over books and, and, yeah. and making certain books, taking them off yes. the shelves. Yes. How tough was it to pass this bill? Mm -hmm. Well, to my surprise, uh, in, in the subcommittee where we started out, uh, 
uh, it was about to be shut down. And then members of the committee said, wait a minute, hold it. Let's hear what he has to say, how he's going to go about it. And we were able to move out of subcommittee, moving forward to, to the other committees. But we're talking about the majority in that committee were Republicans. And so what I'm saying is we, we take the notion that Republicans are going to vote one way, Democrats are going to vote another way. And it was not partisan. It was what's good for the children. And I think as a result of that, we were able to move forward and we've been blessed to have it passed. How long did it take you to pass this? <laughs> this is the second year that I've worked on this particular bill. Uh, last year, we put forward a broader bill. And uh, we were told that we'd have opportunity to go to summer study because we didn't want to deal with it at that time. But we were shut out of summer study. Now, but, when I hear things go to summer study, I generally think that means they're killed. Yeah. <laughs> that's not usually something that's great. Yeah. So it was sent to summer study. Did yeah. you think that meant it was going to be killed? Well, I, I knew that was a possibility. But again, knowing myself, that was not the way I truly perceived it. Because, you know, you told me we were going to put it in summer study. And I had documentation and writing. And we had video of where it was said in committee. You know, this is where it's going to go. This is where we're going to talk about it. But, you know, like I said, we, it was not put into summer study. So we came back this year and would, uh, I had the opportunity to work with both Democrats and Republicans on a bill that hopefully, you know, everyone would find acceptable. And as a result of that, I think everyone feeling they're a part of it, that they've had, you know, a part of structuring this bill, that it was found to be acceptable. And what about all of these other bills that we're seeing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Education is now kind of the, the, the focus. Yeah. There's all this attention being paid to education, um, and, and it's led to some, some tough things. But mm -hmm. what, what do you think about some of the bills that are being passed beyond mm -hmm. yours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, um, the critical race theory bill and mm -hmm. some of the book um, mm -hmm. bills? What, what, what do you think of that? Well, unfortunately, some people traffic in fear and con creating concern in people's minds. And this is not localized to the state of Tennessee. There are some groups or entities who are doing this nationwide. And I be in my view, they distort the truth, the facts, because critical race theory is a college level course. And it has not and is not being taught in our public schools. That was a question I think you were asked, wasn't it? Will, yes, if, if, if we pass this, the Black History Act, mm -hmm. will it mean that critical race theory will be taught to fifth to eighth graders? Yeah. Was that asked of you? Not on the floor, but that was a concern that was asked of me. And I tried to assure my colleagues, uh, and, you know, looking at, I guess I use the term, my track record with them, that what I say is that this is positive role models. This is not an attempt to undermine you or any other group of people. So I think as a result of that, we were fortunate and we got it passed. And it passed, you're absolutely right, nothing passes yeah. without <laughs> bipartisan or at least Republican yes, support. Sir. This yes, certainly sir. had Republican support. Yes, yes. Passed in the House and the Senate. Yes. And um, what did you think by the numbers when, mm -hmm. when it was all said and done? Mm -hmm. Well, when I first looked at it, uh, I guess I was personally arrogant, and I said, how did you do that? <laughs> but in reality, I, I came down to reality, and it was, it was not me. I was a vessel being used by God to move our legislature forward where people can see, yes, we can do something together, uh, particularly when it comes to children. And, and I feel that that's where the blessing came from. It was the grace of God that a bill like this was able to pass in the environment that we have going on. Does it give you more hope about the environment? Mm -hmm. um, or what, what are your thoughts about, I guess, the environment in the yes, midst sir. of those bills I talked about yes, earlier? Sir. You know, what, what, what do you take away from mm -hmm. the fact mm -hmm. that this passed? Yeah. Well, you know, looking at Easter Sunday, and I, I think a lot of us at church, we, we were hearing about hope and uh, miracles. And, and I feel that even though we don't agree on everything, I, I feel we're moving in a direction of being, we can disagree without being disagreeable. We're looking at uh, but, uh, 
UT system is going to work a, on a civics a course that increases our understanding of the political process, which is something I think is we needed to get back in many years ago. And I think as a result of some of these small moves that are being made, we're going to be a better nation for it. And I believe we have a great appreciation for our democracy, the more understanding we have of what civics and democracy is about. What else would you like to see done? So, so this was passed. Yes, sir. What else? What else is on your agenda? What, what, what do you think is possible now? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, I don't think I've got the big head yet, but I, I don't put any limits on what we can do. You know, what I try to do is to, I guess, do what I'm, uh, I feel is good and right, and, and not just for black people, but people in general. And so I try to look at a concern uh, like uh, uh, domestic violence. We were able to get a pill, bill passed in that area uh, to to protect, I'm going to say primarily women who've been exposed to assaults and so forth, with the potential of, of being harmed or killed. You know, uh, we found that Tennessee was number five in the nation when it comes to deaths after domestic assaults. So we were able to get move a bill forward that the magistrate would have the option of keeping that person in jail a greater length of time if they deem it appropriate and necessary. So those are the kind of things we're working on. Domestic violence. Mm -hmm. All right, well that kind of sets mm -hmm. the table mm -hmm. for, for our discussion. A bill, the Black History Act, a bill mm -hmm. that requires black history, black culture be taught in schools grades five through eight. Mm -hmm. That was passed last week in the Senate. It had already passed in the House. It will become law in Tennessee. And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the sponsor here, Democrat from Chattanooga. Uh, and if you want to call in with your comments, questions, this is your chance. There's the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.